Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We're just gonna jump right into today's video. So today we're gonna listen to Carl Wolf. He was one of the first persons or people that I heard talk about um, bases and stuff being on the moon or on the dark side of the moon. He basically discussed and said that he was, I believe an airman and he was taken into a particular room and he was shown the dark side of the moon or the back side, the back dark side of the moon and there was actually bases and stuff up there. And when I heard that, I think it was in 2004 or five, I believe Stephen Greer had a conference and stuff, a disclosure conference and they talked about it then. Um, and he said, basically, he was kind of fearful when he saw it. It was kind of exciting, but fearful, too. And I can understand. Um, and it was actually never put out there. But I want you guys to kind of listen to some of his words here and give me some of your thoughts on it. He did pass away or um, he he died recently. He was 74 years old and he was cycling on his bike and he was hit by a semi truck. So uh, go figure that. Um, take that with the grain of salt as you want. But here's gonna be uh, just a quick snippet of some of his words and what he talked about, what he saw and what he felt. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna quit my yapping and we're gonna get this plan. Into this laboratory, I took a look at the equipment. There was an airman second class in there. I was an airman second class as well. He turned the equipment on and put it through its paces. It didn't do what it was supposed to do. I saw what was going on with it. I said, I, I need to do some troubleshooting on it. It had little printed circuit boards in it with discrete components at that time. It was before we had integrated circuits. And I said to him, you know, we'll have to take this thing out of the lab if we're going to work on it. We can't work in it on it in here in the darkroom environment. So he called someone to get some people to come in and move it. It was about the size of a small apartment refrigerator. It, you know, it wasn't something you could easily move. So everyone left the facility, left the darkroom except this airman second class and myself and we're in waiting for someone to come to remove this piece of equipment. So while I'm in there I said to him and I'm really fascinated with this process how did they get the images from the lunar orbiter to the laboratory here and he went through the whole process describing how the various radio telescopes around the world were linked and they telemetered the data into Langley Field and at the time, I didn't know what the real purpose of this dark room and this operation and this facility was. I thought this was where they were bringing the data in and then releasing the images to the public. I had no idea that there were other issues involved in, in this facility. So he, he starts telling me all of this information and I knew that what we were doing was, was, was classified anyway and that he could only share a certain level of what he was doing with me because of the part compartmentalized nature of, of our jobs. At any rate, I, um, you know, he told me how everything worked. He showed me the equipment where the digital information came in, where it was converted to photographic images. They were doing 35 millimeter strips of film at that time, which were then assembled into 18 and a half by 11 inch uh, mosaics, they were called. There was a digital signature and a grayscale on every 35 millimeter strip and those, those strips were from successive passes around the moon and they would take and build up a photograph. They would scan one section of the moon then another and another and then they would get a larger image. So this mosaic then would be put in that contact printer and that was then a print that was issued to whomever, the press, the scientist, whatever, wherever that was intended to go. So he was showing me how all this worked and we walked over to one side of the lab and he said, by the way, we've discovered a base on the back side of the moon. And I said, I said, whose? <laughs> what do you mean, whose? He said, yes, there's, we've discovered a base on the back side of the moon. And at that point, I beca became frightened and I was a little terrified, thinking to myself that if anybody walks in the room now, I know we're, we're in jeopardy, we're in trouble because he shouldn't be giving me this information. I was fascinated by it, but I also knew that he was overstepping a boundary that he shouldn't be stepping over. And then he pulled out one of these mosaics and showed, showed this base, which had geometric shapes. There were towers, there were uh, spherical uh, buildings, uh, there were very tall uh, towers and things that looked somewhat like radar dishes, but they were large structures. So I, um, I didn't say any more to him because I was concerned again that somebody was going to come in at any moment would catch us having this conversation and we would be in, in, in real trouble. 
I realized that he was telling me this information because he didn't have anybody else to talk to. All right, so there you guys have it. Um, put your comments down below of what you think about that. That's been 30, 40 years, probably over 50 years since you've seen that. Um, it was in 2001 he announced that, but I'm going to leave a link below in the description so you guys can actually check out what he was talking about with the mapping and stuff of the moon. Um, you can actually go in there and put coordinates in it into it as well and i've used it to try to find like the actual flags that were on the moon and stuff i hadn't been able to find anything but uh, i'll put that link down below and you guys can explore that as too because that's actually a pretty cool another tool that's out there for us to look at so as always guys don't forget to like subscribe share these videos and stay tuned for the next video thanks guys for watching Thank you.